fellow St. Lucians, nearly 90,000 of you went to the polls three years ago, and a majority gave the St. Lucia Labour Party a mandate to lead this country for five years. On this third anniversary, I want to thank you once again for the confidence you place in my calling tonight. The mandate you entrusted in us was to put people first in the decisions made for this country. Every day, for over 1,000 days, we have strived to do this in Parliament, in Cabinet, in our constituencies, in our departments, when representing your interests, both at home and abroad. As a party, we remain committed to delivering governance that is based on values, ethics, and standards in public life. On the night of July 26, 2021, we knew, even during the jubilation, that the challenges ahead would be great and one might even say daunting. We have governed with compassion and a desire to unite our country once again. I invited two independent MPs to join my cabinet to show that as a country, we can work together despite political differences. We do not engage in any reprisals of, ven of vengeance in government or the public service, as some administrations unfortunately engage in. We have embraced all solutions who mean well and want our country to progress. We have demonstrated confidence in our judiciary by making the Caribbean Court of Justice our final appellate court. I hope that by governing with compassion, with meritocracy, and with humility, we can set the tone and example for the country as a whole, and in particular, our youth. I want you to be sure and certain that your government cares for you and the well-being of your children. We have placed an emphasis on our youth, our future, their hopes and dreams and futures. We have already been seeing our youth turn their hobbies into entrepreneurship and their skills into business through the results of our youth economy. Young people can have hope that they can approach the government and get a hand up to get their business dreams to become realities. We have already helped hundreds of youth-led startups and sure, some may fail, but they will get up and try and try again, knowing that we've got their back. We have topped up education assistance to parents with, with millions spent over the past two years assisting parents in purchasing books, uniforms, and school supplies. We continued an early Labor Party initiative, providing every four-month student with a $500 bursary. The parents of over 24,000 school children no longer have to worry about facility fees, as your government pays that now. Our fifth formers writing CXA English and Math have those fees covered by your government. Not only does every secondary school child now have a laptop, that's 11,700 laptops, but over 500 homes now benefit from cheaper internet access at just $20 per month, distributed over 1,200 MiFi devices as well. And we do this because we believe in the transformative power of education, the power of access to knowledge. We improve the learning environment by investing over $22 million in the repair of the school plans. We also know the importance of starting learning at an early age. Each dollar we spend in early childhood education gives back to the society 24 later on. In this year's budget, we began providing grants to all early childhood centers. We also added nine new state-of-the-art pre-K classrooms in primary schools to better use the extra capacity in these facilities. We are placing an emphasis on skills with thousands of placements for free skills courses. We have expanded access to higher education scholarships. We introduced a first-generation scholarship program, and we'll be rolling out special assistance to university students to meet their expenses. Teachers have gained additional allowance support, and some principals now have assistance once again. 
health is wealth. And you are making great strides in providing better care and prevention. Universal health care is already benefiting seniors as well as expecting mothers and children. Over 1,200 mothers have already received free checkups and lab work. Enhanced services are available at wellness clinics for persons with diabetes and hypertension. Enhanced cervical cancer prevention and screening is also being rolled out. Construction work on St. Jude will be completed thanks to a $200 million loan from the Saudi, from the Saudi government, which will reinstate the George Odlum National Stadium. One St. Jude is commissioned. We are not yet there where we need to be with health and social care, but we are making great strides. Your government has reintroduced the Distress Fund to provide relief to households who lost everything from fires. We have spent over 10 million in housing repairs in every constituency. Your government has provided relief in the removal of VAT on construction materials like cement, lumber, and roofing material. We are making sure that our CIP monies go into funding infrastructural projects that will provide affordable housing and roads for hundreds of solutions. Your government also con continued the amnesty and residential property tax and ensured that mortgages under $400,000 are waived of paying stamp duty. Contractors earning $10,000 and less will pay no income tax on these earnings. And if you are a public servant, you can benefit from a 20 million home financing facility soon to be rolled out at the Solution Development Bank. Our efforts at food security continue through initiatives like the Farm Labor Support Program so that our farmers can be more productive. We have provided farmers with a labor support program so they can, they can be more productive. We are providing fishers with rebates on fuel, helping them to install more fads so they can catch fish with more ease. We are redeveloping the Shurzel fishing port. We constructed a new Miku jetty. We are providing farmers with fertilizer, sand, to the government of Morocco. We supported NAF NFTO with over $4 million to, su to support the farmers. We provided farmers with water tanks. We are supporting honey and seamless cocoa and mushroom uh, production. We are helping farmers and fishers to put food on our tables. And in your pockets, your government understands the impact that the world has been struggling with that increase in prices called inflation. Despite all the challenges, we provided thousands with a $1,500 grant to help those impacted during COVID to get back on their feet. We continue to roll out $10 million US dollars in the MSME loan program that is helping businesses and entrepreneurs to grow and innovate. Our tourism is at record levels. Our country continues in high demand internationally. Our tourism by new cultural and sporting events, such as the Return of the Jazz Festival. We've recorded participation in St. Lucia Carnival to reach the highest levels. And the ICC Cricket World Cup has been a tremendous success. Your government has not forgotten pensioners. We provided them with a $500 and $600 one-off grants. We raised government pensions to a minimum of $725, and we are increasing NIC pensioners to a minimum of $500. Your government ensured that all taxpayers earning $25,000 or less will pay no income tax. Next week, we will introduce a minimum wage for St. Lucia. Today, more people are better off. We have seen continuous economic growth over the past three years. We have seen increased investment in the, both the public and private sector. We are investing in upgrading our highways, bridges and roads. We have seen significant investment in retail plazas and malls, hotel resorts and restaurants. We have attracted 
over a billion dollars in foreign direct investment, which will be rolled out in the coming years. The challenges and threats to governance still exist, including threats to our security. As a country, we all must continue to play our part against fighting crime. Your government is investing in the police, CCTV cameras, in new police stations, in police equipment, in new courthouses, in a house of justice. But we all must play our part in being our brothers and sisters keeper in keeping St. Lucia clean, green, and safe. <clears throat> My fellow St. Lucians, these are but a few of the initiatives we have already achieved. And by God's grace, there's still more to come. We have a lot to be thankful for, a lot to be proud about as a country. This is, this is shown by our athletes at the Olympics today, our footballers in the semi-pro league, in our hard-working people, in our students, performing commendable at home and abroad. Your government will put you, the people first, in every decision. We won't turn our backs on you. We are here for you. We thank you for your support. We ask that you continue to hold us to account and we continue to proudly serve you. Our future is bright together. God bless St. Lucia. God bless our families. I thank you.